Today we're diving back into the topic of Bitcoin and exploring whether investing in this asset is a good idea or not. In our previous episode, I discussed blockchain technology, which is the core technology behind Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. In today's episode, there's a lot of new content I want to share with you all. Therefore, I won't rehash the points from the previous episode. However, the knowledge from that episode is still crucial, so to fully grasp today's episode, I recommend revisiting it. Today, I'll delve deeper to analyze the advantages and disadvantages of Bitcoin, striving to provide the most impartial analysis possible to give you a fair understanding of this asset. However, these are just personal perspectives. Therefore, my goal isn't to persuade you to share my views, but simply to offer you additional perspectives so you can make your own decisions. The structure of today's episode will be divided into three parts, corresponding to three objectives set throughout Bitcoin's history. First, Bitcoin was created with the goal of becoming a payment tool replacing fiat currency. Then, as this goal proved unfeasible, Bitcoin shifted its focus to becoming a store of value similar to gold. Finally, Bitcoin is evaluated from the perspective of an investment tool. Now, let's analyze the first objective together, which is Bitcoin's inception with the vision to replace the fiat currency system. By the way, for those who may not know, fiat currency refers to the types of currency issued by governments, such as the US dollar we use for daily transactions. This means that initially, Bitcoin was created with the ambition to become a payment tool replacing traditional currency. Now, let's take an overview of popular payment methods today. With the advancement of financial technology, we have payment methods such as bank transfers, card payments, or QR code payments, meaning payments through electronic wallets. Both bank transfers and payments through electronic wallets fundamentally involve handing over money to a third party, in this case, a bank or electronic wallet company. Now, for Bitcoin to potentially replace fiat currency from the perspective of application and daily life, we note that in this section, I am referring to its usability in transactions. To achieve this, Bitcoin must meet several factors. First, processing speed. Currently, when we make purchases and use bank transfers or electronic wallet payments, the seller almost instantly receives the money, meaning they receive balance updates almost immediately, unlike the waiting time with card payments. If you've noticed, when paying with a card, we often have to wait a moment for the card reader to confirm the payment was successful. Then, the transaction is completed. This time can be just a few seconds if fast, or it can be 10-20 seconds if slow. According to the data I have, Visa Card's current transaction processing speed is about 50,000-60,000 transactions per second, while MasterCard's is lower, but still in the tens of thousands. In comparison, Bitcoin's current transaction processing speed, under optimal conditions, is only about 7 transactions per second, a very low number compared to the tens of thousands of Visa and MasterCard. In fact, the fastest Bitcoin transfer time currently also takes several minutes, or even several hours, depending on the state of the Bitcoin network at that time. In terms of speed alone, we can clearly see that Bitcoin is completely unsuitable as a payment tool. Next, let's address the issue of transaction fees. Unlike the traditional model where consumer transactions are often free or charged based on a percentage of a large transaction, with Bitcoin, due to its nature as encrypted data processed by computers, the amount of information between one Bitcoin and thousand Bitcoins does not differ much. Essentially, Bitcoin transaction fees are currently calculated in Satoshis. A Satoshi is the smallest unit of Bitcoin currency, with each Satoshi's equivalent to about one one millionth of a Bitcoin. The cost of transferring Bitcoin depends on transaction processing volume and processing priority. For example, if you want a faster transaction, you may pay a higher fee. Due to this nature, depending on the transaction value, Bitcoin may have advantages or disadvantages compared to traditional forms. For instance, if you need to transfer a large amount of Bitcoin, like 1,000 Bitcoins, valued at approximately $70 million currently, the Bitcoin transfer fee will be very low. However, if you're paying for a loaf of bread or a piece of clothing, the Bitcoin payment fee will be very high. 
in the context of using Bitcoin as a substitute for cash or traditional payment methods, Bitcoin cannot replace them. Next, let's discuss the issue of price stability. From the perspective of payment and intermediary transactions for goods, we need a relatively stable currency. Governments have done this quite well in recent years, keeping exchange rates stable for an extended period, which greatly contributes to a country's import and export activities. However, with Bitcoin, you can see that its value fluctuates greatly. This makes using Bitcoin in commodity transactions challenging. For example, it's impractical to sell a bowl of peach when the price of Bitcoin fluctuates from $60,000 to $70,000 in a day, and then drops to $65,000 afterward. Transactions frequently encounter such value fluctuations, and transactions lasting for extended periods, like import-export contracts, make paying with Bitcoin even more impractical. The next factor is the widespread acceptance of Bitcoin for the reasons analyzed. Currently, in regular transactions, there are hardly any places that accept Bitcoin as payment. For instance, when traveling abroad, you can exchange for Japanese yen or South Korean won at currency exchange points, but finding an exchange point for Bitcoin becomes more difficult. Moreover, the ability to make direct payments with Bitcoin is virtually non-existent. So far, we've only discussed a few factors like transaction time, transaction fees, stability, and market acceptance. However, I haven't touched on more complex factors like security and safety. These are the strongest advantages often mentioned when discussing Bitcoin, but also its weakest points. I'll analyze those later. Even by considering these four factors alone, it's evident that Bitcoin cannot replace fiat currency. In fact, for a long time, even Bitcoin supporters haven't believed it could replace fiat currency as a daily payment tool. The narrative surrounding Bitcoin's goal shifted from being a payment tool to a store of value. Specifically, Bitcoin is seen as a substitute for gold, but in the role of an asset haven. Some argue that gold lacks practical value. Its value is merely due to its limited supply, and once recognized for its value, it becomes valuable. However, while gold has utility value in conducting electricity, due to its lower electrical resistance compared to other metals, making it important in electronic components. This cannot be applied to Bitcoin. In fact, Bitcoin has experienced significant value fluctuations, indicating that it is not a stable asset like gold. Although gold also undergoes price fluctuations, they are not as extreme as those of Bitcoin. Particularly, gold price fluctuations are often the result of economic fluctuations, whereas Bitcoin is often influenced by market FOMO waves. Furthermore, when choosing an asset for sheltering, liquidity and widespread acceptance are crucial factors. Gold has been widely accepted worldwide for thousands of years, while Bitcoin still faces limitations in this regard. Even in the future, doubts about Bitcoin persist. Some believe in its potential, while others do not. If we bring up this issue, many may consider me overly concerned if I were to say that I'm unsure whether gold will retain its value tomorrow or not. But with Bitcoin, the situation is different. The very fact that we are sitting here discussing it is evidence of the uncertainty surrounding Bitcoin's future. An important factor is the security and anonymity of Bitcoin, an advantage that many often praise. However, as I mentioned earlier, this is also Bitcoin's greatest weakness. I'll leave this point for further analysis. For now, let's pause at the points I've just discussed. There are enough reasons to doubt Bitcoin's ability to replace gold as a store of value. When discussing this issue, people often talk about the safety of sheltering in gold, even though its price appreciation potential is not high. Meanwhile, they believe that Bitcoin will increase to $100,000, $500,000, or even $1 million, for Bitcoin in the future. However, when saying so, they misunderstand the nature of Bitcoin. Instead of seeing it as a store of value, they view it as an investment tool. These two concepts are entirely different and many often confuse them. And now let's look at this investment aspect. Firstly, the most important reason why I don't see this as an effective investment channel is because the current Bitcoin market is very poorly regulated, not only in our country, but globally. First, this is because it's a new type of asset, so lawmakers need time to study and establish regulations for it. 
Second, this is due to some of its unique characteristics, especially its anonymity, making its management more challenging than usual. Third, this is because of its global nature, requiring nations to reach consensus on regulatory policies, while each country has its own monetary and tax policies. This is fertile ground for fraudsters, deceivers. When investing in the stock market, every listed company is subject to government supervision, with countless stringent conditions and regulations. Any fraudulent or market manipulation behavior will immediately be intervened by these agencies. If you remember a few years ago, when Elon Musk made misleading statements that caused Tesla's stock price to skyrocket, he was immediately sued by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, and faced heavy penalties. However, with Elon Musk in the cryptocurrency market, the story is different. He is almost free to operate without personal intervention. I admire Elon Musk in many aspects, from his perseverance in developing Tesla to his significant contributions to the aerospace industry. However, his involvement in inflating the price of Bitcoin in 2021, followed by the digital currency Dogecoin, has somewhat changed my perspective of him. In fact, to be blunt, in terms of making money, he was quite astute in identifying a loophole, a territory untouched by the law. He seized this opportunity to make extra money. However, in terms of ethics, he seems ambiguous, knowing that many people got caught up in these pumping schemes of his and Elon Musk's story is just one example among many others. There are plenty of other scandals, such as the collapse of the FTX exchange, or more recently, the scandals involving the Binance exchange, which have caused a lot of people to struggle. Not to mention the countless cases of pump and dump schemes and other scams in the cryptocurrency realm, where there is hardly any regulation. Numerous cryptocurrencies are created with the simple goal of exploiting people's greed and desire to get rich quickly. In my personal view, even if the land is full of gold, I wouldn't dig in a place where I know the law hasn't been established, where power often belongs to the strong and the weak are often oppressed, especially when I'm not one of the powerful in such an environment. For Bitcoin, it can't replace fiat currency, and it's also difficult to replace gold. It can't be used as a means of payment, nor is it a reliable store of value or a safe investment channel. Looking back, I don't see a future for Bitcoin. Investors in Bitcoin today, in my opinion, are simply chasing a product that I don't see a future in. They only care about buying at the current price and hoping that someone else will buy at a higher price so they can sell and make a profit. I often use an example to teach this point. Imagine someone picks up a rock off the street and wants to sell it to me for $1 million. I wouldn't buy it. Even if I knew someone right after me was willing to buy it for $2.2 million, that still wouldn't make me buy it. Because the value of the rock they're buying is based on the expectation of selling it to someone else. So the value of the rock gets pushed up, and eventually someone will buy it for $10 million. But when no one else is willing to pay Hival million, they'll be the last one holding the rock at $10 million. This story has happened many times in history. And from my personal perspective, the story of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency yesterday is just as simple. They are financial tools without the ability to pay, store value, and have no future development. Their existence and trading are solely based on the hope of selling them at a higher price. In reality, this is the true motivation for most Bitcoin investors. They invest with the goal of selling to others at a higher price to make a profit. The word on the street is that Bitcoin will rise to 100,000, 500,000 or even 1 million then. They'll sell and become rich. It's a simple experiment. I've decided to stay out of this game because besides Bitcoin, there are many other investment channels to make money safely and transparently. Before concluding, let's recap what I've analyzed and shared today from why I don't believe Bitcoin can replace fiat money to why I don't think it can replace gold or traditional financial tools as a store of value and finally why I think it can't become an investment tool. I think that's enough for us to see the whole picture of Bitcoin. However, there's still a core factor that many people mention and use to argue. It's Bitcoin's greatest advantage. Decentralization, security, and anonymity. These factors are the foundation for the existence and trust in Bitcoin for many people. Should you invest in Bitcoin or not? 
Can Bitcoin Achieve the Future That Many People Expect? I'll dedicate another episode to analyze these aspects. In the upcoming episode, I'll share why I believe that sooner or later, Bitcoin will have a similar outcome to the story of the rock I just shared. Today's episode has been quite long, so I'll pause here. If you found this information useful, please share it with your friends and loved ones. Additionally, as usual, because YouTube's algorithm favors videos with more likes, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button to help our video reach more people. You can also subscribe to the channel to receive notifications whenever new content is updated. Thank you for watching, and I wish you a pleasant weekend evening.